Kelly Rowland is one of the original members of Destiny's Child, one of the best-selling girl groups of all time. She started releasing music as a solo artist in 2002 and achieved great success with songs like Dilemma, Like This, and Motivation. Her solo career has also had a lot of low moments, ranging from album commercial failures to living in the shadow of her lifelong friend and fellow groupmate Beyonce. Then Kelly finally found a lane that allowed her to be a superstar without the unnecessary comparisons. There was a time when Kelly ruled dance floors across Europe with her Europop dance anthems. The songs went number one in most major countries in the continent and Australia. But Kelly's native country failed to embrace her new direction, and as a result, she got boxed into the R&B genre in the States. I've had this video on my list for some time now, and after seeing Pete Rosenberg basically tell Kelly that she plays second to Beyonce, I couldn't help but think about Kelly's successful dance music era, and how much she influenced the EDM explosion of the 2010s, among other accomplishments. This is Kelly Rowland's forgotten Euro pop dance music era and why it was ignored in America. Audience, you sold over 100,050 copies of your record over here. And that's the reason why we proudly present the gold record for When Love Takes Over. This video is sponsored by Scentbird your go-to destination to explore and try new perfumes before committing to a full bottle. Scentbird is a monthly fragrance subscription service that sends you scents tailored specifically for you. They carry a diverse variety of companies that range from authentic designers to indie brands. You can choose from popular fragrance brands like Versace, Juicy Couture, Vince Camuto, and Burberry. Every month, they'll send you scents that come in spill-proof spray 8mm bottles, which gives you about 120 sprays. Each bottle has lasted me at least 4 months, and they're a lot bigger than regular scent samples. This month, they sent me Sexual Noir by Michelle Germain, Sport by Hope, and Bitch Please by Confessions of a Rebel. And I love every single one of these, so I'm definitely looking forward to buying the full bottles whenever I run out. To start receiving your fragrances, you'll need to head over to Scentbird.com to fill out their personalized questionnaire, where you'll tell them all about your preferences, whether that be clean or sweet scents. Then you can activate your subscription. Make sure you use my code BLACKFEMININITYTV to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird, which will bring your total down to just $7. That's code BLACKFEMININITYTV. All details will be linked in the description box. Thank you again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Calendria Trené Rowland rose to fame in the late 90s as a member of the R&B girl group Destiny's Child. She was the second member after Michelle to release a solo album. Following the release of the group's super successful third album, Survivor, she released her debut album, Simply Deep, in 2003, while still a member of Destiny's Child. The record was a mixture of rock and R&B. The album went platinum in the UK, taking the number one spot in the country and reaching the top 10 in Ireland, New Zealand, and Australia. It only reached number 12 in the United States, but the album has since sold nearly 1 million copies in the country. Her single, Stole, was also a moderate hit overseas. He was always such a nice boy, the quiet one with good intentions. To talk to him, give him the time of day, and I turn away if I would have been the one. The whole concept of the song is talking about um, different characters' lives, of course, in, in the story, and it's uh, basically talking about how their lives were stole and. Um, you, I guess the video is really going to bring all of those characters out and especially what they went through. I actually think that people will understand the song more and it doesn't have to necessarily be any of these specific characters in the video or what happened to them, but they can, if they've gone through anything like this, then they can actually, you know, bring what they've gone through on the table. And I think that a lot of people are going to be excited to see this because 
it's just reality, you know, in a video. I know some, sometimes a lot of people try to stay away from it, but this is true, it's what happens. Like everyday kids go through things like uh, peer pressure and, and feeling smart and then kids telling you that it's not cool so you just don't know what to do. So you drive yourself crazy thinking about it and you like, you have girls who are pregnant and they, they, they're t they have teenage pregnancies and they don't know what to do. And but the other singles failed to make a big impact on the charts. That same year, she was featured on Nelly's single, Dilemma, her first number one single as a solo artist, and one of the best-selling singles of 2002. The song topped the US Billboard Hot 100 for 10 non-consecutive weeks and reached number one in other countries in the world. It also won the pair a Grammy Award for Best Rap Song Collaboration, making her the first member of Destiny's Child to earn a Grammy for a solo record. But her follow-up project would take five whole years to arrive. In between that time, the group released their final album, and Kelly was featured on rapper Trina's hit top 20 single, Here We Go. In March 2007, Kelly released her sophomore album's lead single entitled Like This, featuring rapper Eve, and co-written by Sean Garrett, Polo De Don, Black Elvis, and Jason Perry. It reached the top 30 in America and was super successful on urban radio. Her sophomore album named Miss Kelly sold nearly 90,000 units in its first week of release, and it received generally positive reviews. While the album did fairly well in America, it failed to do the same in other countries. But the album's third single, Work, performed really well overseas after it was remixed by British DJ duo Freemasons, giving it new life. But the song failed to chart in the States. However, the commercial success of the record in Europe sparked something in Kelly. She spent a year in Europe, and in 2008, she collaborated with French singer Nadia for the dance pop song titled No Future in the Past. recorded additional music for the Diva Deluxe version of the Miss Kelly album, which featured more up-tempo tracks. The Diva Deluxe version features Electro House remixes of the songs Come Back and Like This. She also did a duet with Italian singer Tiziano Ferro. That same summer, while in France, Kelly discovered French DJ David Guetta at one of his techno shows in Cannes. David had been a staple in French house music for more than a decade, and Kelly had absolutely no idea that this would change the direction of her career. In January 2009, Kelly parted ways with her longtime manager Matthew Knowles, who managed her career since Destiny's Child. Then she ended her contract with Columbia Records two months later to quote, explore new creative directions and seek other opportunities. In reality, the label dumped her because of the failure of her sophomore album, and they didn't like the direction she wanted to go in as far as her music was concerned. Kelly's time in Europe sparked her interest in recording dance music, so she connected with David that year and asked him to play some of his new tracks for her. That's when he unveiled a piano pop track that moved her to tears. Kelly asked him to be on the song, and he agreed. They took the track to London to record, and songwriting was handled by the Australian songwriting duo Nervo. The track later became known as When Love Takes Over. Kelly, David, and Nervo were very happy with the track, but her label at the time, Columbia, was not too pleased with Kelly doing dance music. So the track ended up getting shelved until after she left the label. David premiered the song during a performance in March 2009 at Miami's Ultra Music Festival. She told Paper Magazine, I spent about a year of my life in Europe really listening to a whole bunch of European DJs and hearing dance music a lot on the radio and really loving it. But I didn't really think that I would would do a dance record until I went out in the south of France and David 
Lord Ghetto was spinning at a club. Listening to him was just crazy. I heard the track When Love Takes Over, and I asked if I could take it to London to write lyrics to it. And so we wrote When Love Takes Over, and it was my first introduction to dance music. Then I went to Europe to promote the record with David, and it was a whole other monster. It's really a culture, and I love it. And in another interview with Billboard, she said, I felt so much emotion from the track. Something happened the first time I heard it, and it was just beautiful. I had spent nights dancing in the south of France from 12.45 a.m. to 8 in the morning, but I had never thought about recording a dance track myself. Hearing David's song made me consider taking on this whole new style, end quote. We met uh, in the south of France, and uh, I was playing as a DJ. Uh, I don't think Kelly knew a lot about dance music before, but she did know how to dance to it because <laughs> she danced all night. And uh, we just had fun and I played that track, uh, the instrumental of When Love Takes Over, and she loved it. She was totally moved. She came to see me, oh, what is this music? And, you know, I was very flattered and um, I gave her the track and uh, she came back with that beautiful song. I mean, it's it's different because it's dance music. And um, the closest I think I've even tried to come uh, to dance music is when I did work, the Freemasons remix. But this is completely different, you know. And David made me feel extremely comfortable um, being in that world. The track actually comforted me. It sounds strange enough, but it really did. Um, and having that experience that I did in the south of France, I was like, I want this type of feeling on my record. Like, it feels good. When Love Takes Over was officially released as the first single from his fourth studio album, and it was an instant hit across Europe, reaching number one in Belgium, Czech Republic, Hungary, Ireland, Italy, Slovakia, Switzerland, and the UK, which made David the first Frenchman to top the charts since the year 2000. The single also reached the top 10 in other countries like France, Australia, Germany, Sweden, and Spain, and even did fairly well in Canada. It was one of the first dance R&B crossover tracks to become a huge pop hit. And uh, we really enjoyed the song and everything, and uh, it's not going so bad with the music for you guys. Uh, so we've got a little present to give something in return back to you. Yeah, because we love your song and so does the German audience. You sold over 100,050 copies of your record over here. And that's the reason why we proudly present the gold record for When Love Takes Over. Über 150,000 Platten haben sie verkauft. Wir bekommen jetzt und hier von uns ihre goldene Schallplatte verliehen. Thank you so much. It's yours. Congratulations. Congratulations! But the single was lagging far behind in the United States, only reaching number 76 on Billboard's Hot 100, which became David's highest charting single in the US at the time. But it did top both the Hot Dance Earplay and Hot Dance Club Songs charts in America. David and Kelly performed the song at various concerts across Europe to promote the record, including a performance during the gown competition at the 2009 Miss Universe contest. It took the number one spot on Billboard's Best of 2009 Dance Club Songs chart. And in 2013, Billboard named it the number one dance pop collaboration of all time for being a contributing factor to the explosion of the EDM genre in the 2010s and the start of DJs collaborating with pop stars for EDM tracks. It received several platinum and gold certifications in different countries, going platinum in Denmark, Germany, Spain, Sweden, Switzerland, and Germany, and double platinum in Australia, Austria, and the UK. When Love Takes Over boosted the careers of both artists in many ways. It earned David Guetta his first Grammy Award and helped raise his profile, sparking interest with many other American artists. He said, the track with Kelly has made me experiment with more American urban influence. Musically, it's opened a new world for me. It's pure pop with a lot of detail, and Kelly had this Whitney Houston vibe and nailed it. As for Kelly, she didn't have concrete plans for another solo album at the time, but she decided to focus more on club dance floors, telling Billboard. This has definitely inspired me to put more of a dance sound on an album of my own. I want to try out the world without straying too far from my urban roots. When David's fourth studio album was released in August 2009, Kelly was featured on the songs It's The Way You Love Me, 
and Choose featuring Neo. She ended up inking a new recording contract with Universal Motown after music executive Sylvia Rohn overheard her recording music in the studio. And from there, it was off to the races for Kelly. In early 2010, Kelly was approached by Italian DJ Alex Guadino to provide lead vocals on his song, What a Feeling. Her vocal performance was praised by critics, and the single debuted at number 6 on the UK Singles Chart. By the summer, Kelly had landed another dance hit titled Commander, with the help of David of course. They collaborated with French producer Sandy V and songwriter Rico Love to compose the female empowerment themed track. She released it in May that year as the international lead single off her forthcoming album. And her and Rico also released an urban mix of the song. Commander had moderate success across Europe, but because of it leaking online before its official release, it took away from the song's longevity. There were also online blogs making baseless claims that there was a feud between Kelly and Beyonce, alleging that B released the music video to her song Why Don't You Love Me right before Kelly to spite her. An unfinished version of the Commander video had also leaked online ahead of its release. Sadly, the music video was heavily criticized online for the lack of budget and heavy use of green screen, which features a crowd dancing out of sync with the music. Professional critics also felt that the song wasn't radio friendly enough and would work better in the clubs. But it still managed to top the US Hot Dance Club songs, and Entertainment Weekly named it the number one summer jam of the year. Kelly even says she inspired Usher to go the EDM route saying, No one like me was doing dance music back then. Producers only knew me in an R&B capacity. I played Usher a song and he said, That record is crazy. But I was like, You should try dance. And of course, that's when we saw Usher release his song, OMG, that year, which topped the charts in Australia, Ireland, New Zealand, the United Kingdom, and the United States. He also went on to release other EDM songs like DJ Got Us Fallen In Love and Without You with David Guetta. That year, Kelly collaborated with English rapper Tiny Tempa for his song Invincible and recorded the theme song for the 2010 FIFA World Cup in South Africa. In America, Kelly released the urban contemporary song Grown Woman. The pop track, Rose Colored Glasses. And the Euro dance single, Forever and a Day, to kick off her album. The album was slated to be released by the end of the year, but those singles were commercial failures, and neither of them were strong enough to launch the album. In Europe, Kelly didn't have to compete with anyone to be considered a superstar, but in America, it was a different story, and she realized she had to go back to her urban roots to even succeed in her native country. I think he's trying to get on it. Everybody was like, are you going to do a full dance album? Are you going to do an urban album? What kind of album are you going to do? I'm doing both because I don't allow nobody to put me in a box. Nobody puts baby in a corner. <laughs> I agree. Uh, what do you say to, to, to those people, those fans that are fans of Kelly Rowland, the R&B singer, um, who aren't necessarily into dance music? What do you, and, and they're kind of looking to you like, we kind of want something R&B from you. Don't judge me yet. Listen to the record. Um, for so long, like, you know, being in a group and thinking as a team was so much a part of, like, my blood, my makeup, my body type, that I had to almost reprogram myself for just me, I, Kelly. you know, Kelly. Okay, I gotta find my voice. I, I blame a little bit of myself of not having the faith 
to do that. And I finally have the faith to do that. So at least I found the faith. There is space for everybody. B has her lane. Gaga has her lane. Rihanna has her lane. Sierra has her lane. I got my lane. You know what I mean? And there's nothing wrong with everybody having a lane. Don't compare. In late 2010, Kelly re-entered the studio to get to work on R&B music for the U.S. market. She recruited some of the best R&B producers for the album, like Dark Child, Rico Love, Tricky Stort, LaShawn Daniels, and Ku Carell. In April 2011, Kelly finally released a lead single for the US market that got people excited for her. The single Motivation, featuring Lil Wayne, received favorable reviews and shot to number 17 on the Billboard Hot 100. It also topped the Hot R&B Hip Hop Songs chart, where it stayed for seven consecutive weeks, making this her highest chart and single on Billboard since Dilemma, and the track was certified double platinum. It earned Kelly a Soul Train Music Award for Song of the Year and a Billboard Music Award for Top R&B Song. Motivation also received a Grammy nomination for Best Rap Sung Collaboration. Her third album, Here I Am, finally arrived that summer. It reached number three on Billboard, making this her highest charting album. The album features multiple genres tailored specifically towards different markets. The international version features more up-tempo EDM music, like the song Down For Whatever, that was produced by Lady Gaga's frequent collaborator, Red One. while the US version of the album featured more R&B with guest appearances by a number of rappers. But the critical reception for Here I Am was mixed for the lack of cohesion. Kelly released the song Lay It On Me featuring Big Sean as the next single. But this failed to make a big impact on the radio and on the charts. Down For Whatever was the last single released from the album, and it did far better in Europe than the States, of course, reaching number six in the UK and number five in Scotland. It never charted on any chart in America. But the music she released in the years that followed strayed further and further away from the dance floor approach. And this was during the time when EDM was soaring across the globe. Her highly anticipated fourth and last studio album to date, Talk A Good Game, was released in June 2013 debuting at number four with 68,000 copies in first week sales. Though it received generally positive reviews, this was Kelly's least commercially successful album. The most notable song on the record is the confessional ballad, Dirty Laundry, that detailed hardships that she experienced after Destiny's Child, what she calls a rough period in her life. She made revelations about being in an abusive relationship and feeling a sense of resentment over Beyonce's success as her own own solo career was off to a slow start. I'm on the kitchen floor. He took the keys. I was mad. Kelly revealed to Billboard that the song was so hard for her to record that she broke down crying several times during the process. She said, It was very emotional. It took me days to record. I had to get past being so upset and actually sing the song, not sob through it. I always hope that my music can inspire someone the same way other artists inspire me. How is your relationship today with Beyonce? She is so incredibly supportive. I'm so grateful for her, for Michelle, for being incredible women in my life and always lifting me up. Kelly Rowland in tears talking about the woman she calls her sister. One of the closest people to me. I love her to death. It was an emotional roller coaster a piece of me would just go away every time he would say something how did you hide that from the public you smile you've had a tremendously successful career in your own right beyonce's has been a little bit bigger how much of a bother has that been for you um i think it's frustrating by the fact that people are they can't do anything but compare and you know, if you have siblings and a family, everybody's path is gonna be different. Their road to greatness is gonna be different. So I just think that it's very simple-minded for people to think, oh, well, they're all just supposed to be at one specific level. But what got people talking was the lyrics to Dirty Laundry, which mm -hmm. 
were perceived to be an act of jealousy. Was that the case? No, I don't. I wouldn't say that it was jealousy. It was more so just like. I was happy for her, but I was wondering how come things weren't like really igniting for me the way I, I wanted them to in my head. And at that time, I just wanted people to see me. Did you talk to Beyonce about those lyrics? Yes. So she, she was one of the first per people mm. to hear it. Actually, the first person to hear it, the first person I played it for. What was her reaction? We shared a tear. We shared a tear or something. Why a tear? Um, because it was something that she didn't know that I was going through. And we just were sisters, so we, you know. But of course, the media completely ignored her getting candid about her abusive relationship and chose to focus on her comments about being quote unquote jealous of Beyonce. A year after Talk A Good Game, Kelly became pregnant and took a hiatus from music. Her mother, Doris Roland Garrison, suddenly passed away at the age of 66 a few weeks after Kelly gave birth to her son and just days before her 67th birthday. Kelly began recording music again in late 2015, but she would end up spending the next several years still mourning the death of her mother. And whenever she tried to promote new music, she still had to deal with the never-ending questions about Beyonce. I've grieved now for three years, the loss of my mom. It just came out of nowhere. I think that's the really tough part of it all, was that it just happened out of nowhere. And my mom fights through everything. so. Me going there, like being ready to fight with her, was no longer an option. She died of a heart attack? Yes. Did you get to say goodbye? I did in my way. I did in my way. What was the last thing she said to you? <sighs> that was really tough. That was a, that's a, a really tough question. That I actually, it's one of my greatest regrets. How excited are you for Beyonce and her second pregnancy? Kelly and Michelle between girls and it's Beyonce and Kelly and Michelle forever. Where's G? Do you think she should perform at the Grammys and Coachella still? Yeah, I had one question. Everybody's making a big deal. What do you think of, you know, Beyonce's short hair is like a big... Talking about new music, you know, all the talk this week has been about Beyonce's new album. Have you heard it yet? Have you had an opportunity to give some thoughts on the whole thing? I sure have. It's great. It's absolutely great. Really different though, right? Yes, really different. Is that... But getting back to what I'm here to talk about, yeah. Claritin, um, I'm very <laughs> excited to be I'm sure Kelly and Michelle don't mind questions about Beyonce sometimes, but I just feel like they've accomplished enough things in their own careers that there is no need for journalists to constantly bring their close friend and sister up every time. I can't speak for Kelly, but I wouldn't be too shocked if the non-stop career comparisons eventually discouraged her from making music. In the American music market, she has someone to compete with, which unfortunately happens to be her close friend, who happens to be the biggest black music act in the country. Overseas, Kelly didn't face these kind of issues. And the next obvious reason is that lighter skinned black women fare overwhelmingly better than darker toned female singers in the entertainment world and in society in general. From a colorism perspective, show me at pop radio the number of black women that were of high complexion and the number of black women that were of dark complexion that got airplay. And again, this is from a research perspective. The, the black women that have been uh, successful with airplay were all of light complexion. Can you imagine what it's like being in a group with Beyonce? Yeah. <laughs> I would just torture myself in my head like, well, they're gonna compare anyways. I, I would be lying if I said, no, it's never bothered me. It's very unfortunate that so many artists' careers benefited from the EDM era and Kelly didn't get the recognition she deserved in America. After she recorded When Love Takes Over with David Guetta, he finally broke into the American music market. Will I Am got in touch with him right after the single. And as we all remember, the Black Eyed Peas hit songs Rock That Body and Got a Feeling were born. David went on to collaborate with a plethora of North American artists to produce EDM club bangers. And all of this stems from his partnership with Kelly. And um, you know, it's crazy. Something crazy happened today. I'm sitting down here, and Kelly Rowland is sitting close to me. And 
Kelly, I never had the chance, but I want to thank you, because you should know the first time a celebrity artist came and gave me trust, it was her, so thank you. She has since sold over 45 million records as a solo artist, but it's been nearly a decade since her last studio album. Kelly returned in the year 2020 with the disco-inspired dance floor song Crazy. And in 2021, she released a modern version of CeCe Peniston's 90s hit, Finally, with producer Amorphous featuring the legendary singer herself with some additional songwriting from MNEK. Hopefully one day, Kelly will release a full-length dance album. Thank you again to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. Make sure you use my code BLACKFEMININITYTV to get 55% off your first month at Scentbird. All details will be linked in the description box. If you worked in retail in the 2010s, do you remember any of these songs by Kelly Rowland? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Like this video and subscribe to BFTV for more content.